Hey everybody, how you doing? This is Kaylana, the Blessed Driver here. And today I want to talk about a topic that's been on my heart for a while. And this in regards to um, what are your takeaways and what are you learning when you are engaging with uh, people like customers and clients that may seem like they have it better than you or may be well off or successful. And, and it's not just only customers or clients like that, but it may be something that they um, are doing or maybe something that you keep noticing about them that it's kind of like sparking your interest okay and um i'm, I'm gonna kind of give you um a brief background as to why i'm doing this video okay um and back in 2015 i applied to this home health agency locally here in central florida and i worked there for about a, about a year and a half okay excuse me and um i liked working there you know it was pretty decent and um and one of the one of the companies that they partnered with was a very upscale retirement community. It was a retirement community, but it was mostly for like people that were 60 and older or 65 and older, but it was like around that range. And everybody that lived there were, were all wealthy. Like these were like both the people. So I'm not talking about people that had like maybe ten, twenty thousand dollars. I'm talking about people that used to be millionaires or billionaires. I'm not quite sure about billionaires, but, or they had um, spouses that were wealthy and basically they, once the spouse passed then whoever was, was, um, the beneficiary, like the husband of the wife pretty much, um, you know, had like a, you know, the, the life insurance or maybe, um, some, some type of a benefit. Um, I forgot what it's called, but it's like when pension. But some of them also invested. So basically, this is a wealthy community for people um, that were older and stuff like that. But they had a lot of great amenities there. And so um, I don't want to say the name of it here on social media, but it was a very well-known place. And so at the, at that time, I had never even really heard of the place before until I was going there to take care of uh, some of the clients, right? And it, it was quite a few of the clients I was... Um, you know, older people that I was going to go help take care of and, you know, feed you know, or help take showers or, you know, walk around with them, you know, things like that. Right. So long story short, um, it's, it's kind of funny, but I'm gonna say it. Um, one, one particular client, it was like my first time working with her and she was a older lady. Well, she was old, but she was very like active and she walked around like it was like nobody's business and she was in her 90s like she was like in her late 90s right and she um i'm trying to explain it so i won't give out too much detail and so like she was really cool you know she was from up north and everything but you know she because you know how there's some people that are older like they're in they're old in their age and they have certain ways about themselves you know um that you know you have to kind of like deal with and so uh she was very well off and so i forgot what her husband did but I know her first husband passed away and she remarried. She had like I think three or four kids or something. But anyway, she had like, you know, she had a a house up north in the Poconos. And I mean, she had a maid, right? And so, but then she moved down here in Florida and settled over the years with her husband at that time. And so anyway, basically like I, I would help take care of her and you know, and she stayed in this community because, like, the community, it, it, they were like condos almost, but some people converted them into like big areas, like where they where they kind of combine them into like maybe like one condo will be they would tear down the walls and make it out of like one big flat. But they're very nice. Um, however, I wouldn't say that they were worth a hundred thousand dollars a year, but that's what you're dealing with. You know, you're dealing with wealthy people, and so. You know got to know her over a period of time and so over a period of time you know sometimes you know you got people that that kind of like to show off their money and so i remember one day um i think she had checked the mail the day before it was something and so she was uh she had like some mail out and like you know we don't go to people's mail unless they ask us to read something for them or help help them write a check or something and so she had some mail on the table and it was from a well-known um investment firm and I, I was like because she had she had it like out and so you know I was um cleaning up the table because she had breakfast and so she went back in the room and she was you know um get ready to take a shower and so I just kind of glanced down for a second and then I kept you know doing what I was doing 
And so she came back out um, to do ask me something. It was something or other. And she kind of like, you know, looked down at the table and she kind of like moved the envelopes, you know, with the, with the um, financial information on it just so I could see it, you know, just kind of like shuffling around. She kind of looked at me like, yeah, that's all the money I have, you know. And like her investments were like in the millions. I could not believe that. I was like, no way. And I know people invest and they have money. I mean, I know a little bit about investments, but not to the to the point where, you know, I've I've made that much money, of course. But she made a lot of money, like, and and I'm sure that was over the years, and that was also from, you know, other stuff that maybe her ex husband did, or um, cause she, or or her, um, or her former husband, because <clears throat> both have because both of them have passed away, and so I was like, man, that's a lot of money, and so like you know, I just you know ignored what she did, and so I just kind of like kept doing what I was doing. And so I ended up, um, I mean, I eventually like left the company, but, um, there's another client that lived in that neighborhood and her, she, she used to be like a teacher or something, but she was never like, she never worked a job where it paid her like six figures. Um, but her, her husband at the time, because he passed, he was, um, I forgot what he did, but it just seemed like some of these people had really good jobs. Some of them used to be lawyers. Some of them used to be doctors. Um, some of them used to, just, just used to be in the military. But what I had begun to realize is that a lot of these elderly people save money over the years in investments. And so they also were able to um, just save, you know, had pensions and stuff like that. And some of them really didn't have jobs where it made them six figures. They just saved their money. And so, but they started at a younger age or they had a job where they, they just put money into like an escrow or something, 401k or like whatever they had back then. And so they just saved it. And that's kind of like how the money just grew on them. And, you know, some people are able to have money that's set aside that will take care of them for the rest of their lives, but they have it in investments. Okay. Looking at my gas. Ooh, can turn my thing off. Sorry, y'all. E. So anyway, um... But it was like, she was well off too. Like this woman was well off because she had kids and you know I had met her sons and you know, her daughter and stuff. And this one particular woman, the second woman I'm, I'm telling you guys about, like, you know, her, her kids were pretty successful. And one of her uh, sons was like an attorney. Another one was like an engineer. Cause I had met one of her sons that's an attorney here. He's actually here in Florida. And the other one was an architect or engineer or something out and he moved to Sweden or something, Switzerland or Sweden. And so as I got to know these people, a former friend of mine um, and I were talking because her and I had met up because she was trying to get, she was, she was trying to talk to me about a business opportunity. Uh, I want to say it was, I can't think of the name of the company, Transamerica or something like that. And we got to talking about finance and savings and things like that. And she began to tell me, she said, Kay, you know, I really do believe that it's not by happenstance that you came across these people. I don't think it's by happenstance that God is showing you, because you know she's also a Christian. She's a first lady, actually. And she's like, I don't believe it's, it's by happenstance that you come across these wealthy people um, in these neighborhoods or or that you were able to see some of their financials. And I, I think that it's time for you to start thinking about your future, start, start, start time for you to start thinking about Isaiah's future, my son, or um, how to save money. Just, just different things she was telling me about. And I thought about what she said, and I, I agree with her, but I never really took it seriously. And the reason why I'm saying this, guys, is because for the, for those of you guys that are watching this video um, that really don't really know a whole lot about my channel, you know, I, I just basically do vlogs on the app based gig community and also business matters, just things like that. And so, but I'm also looking at it from another standpoint because at that time I was working from home for a home health agency, and I always worked with wealthy people. Um, and then it came to the point where when I shifted out of that, you know, I worked at this other home health, not home health, but it was a assisted living facility and it was, it was an expensive place. I mean, gosh, it was expensive, but a lot of the people had money. And so eventually when I came out of that, I started doing Uber and then I started doing Lyft and Postmates and then of course Instacart. And then that's kind of how things kind of kind of tumbled from there okay and then over some time I, I was thinking about you know what this makes sense because even here in central florida 
excuse me, like, I mean, Florida has a lot of rich people here anyway. I'm sure, I'm sure that you guys know that. But I have always wondered, what in the world do they do to get what they have? And I know some of you guys that go, oh, yeah, they, they went to school, they work. I mean, I'm sure a lot of you guys have, have degrees. And I'm sure a lot of you guys have, you know, um, college education and stuff, but you're not where they are. And some people just come from old money. And you guys know what old money is. Old money is just money that was passed down from generation to generation and just accumulates in the family. Some people are just come from a family or bloodline that is just wealthy, okay? And so that's just the way that it is. And so, um, and then some people just were able to, and like some people had good jobs from different states and then they moved and they just kind of kept what they were doing when they transitioned. And so um, and I'm telling you, like I know people who have great education, like great college education, like master's degrees and PhDs, but they never got to the point to the place where they were making quite like six figures or making millions of dollars. I mean, it happens to some people. But going on to say with this with, with this particular topic, I just kind of feel like sometimes running into people that are successful should be able to teach you something. It doesn't necessarily mean that you're called to always be rich or to do what they do, but kind of learn some of the learn some of the techniques that they used to be able to get where they are. Now, some people got where they are because they weren't being honest. They weren't, um, you know, they didn't get what they got because they were being truthful. Um, but I'm just talking about the people who were, okay? And so, you know, I wouldn't dare ask somebody, well, how'd you get the house like this? Because let me tell you guys, like here... Like, I mean, right now, I mean, I'm in this, I'm in an area that's middle to upper middle class. It's not wealthy, but it's on the other side, on, 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 on this other side, because like right now I'm in Maitland. On this other side, like there are houses that are like close to the millions. And so, you know, there's times where I think about that when I'm delivering food or delivering groceries or something or, or, or like whatever service I'm doing. And I think about this like sometimes and I've picked up people from Uber, like they need an Uber ride. And I dropped them off at their house. I'm like, one day, this was like, this was like last year, I think. Earlier this year or last year, I picked up a family. It was last year. I picked up a family. Um, I was out doing an Uber ride. And this was like in an area that's like not even five minutes away. So it's like right on the other side of here, actually. And um, it, was a, it was a family. And they were all having a good time. A couple of people were drunk, whatever. And I picked them up from a restaurant. And it was going down a dark road. So I'm thinking, okay, where am I going? And so as I got down this road, it was like these big houses. And so I pulled in and they're like, oh yeah, this house right here. So I'm like, okay. So I just want to make sure the directions are right. That was on the on the app. And this house was this big. I'm like, I said, so I asked the lady, I said, this is your house? She goes, yeah. Well, you know, she's she a little tipsy, but you know, she's like, yeah, you know, her, her son was back there laughing and stuff. And they're having a good time. I mean, they were hilarious. But I'm like, man. And to some people that are wealthy or rich, that's just the way of life for them. And I think because they probably worked hard for what they've done or maybe have been in that lifestyle for so long, it's not really nothing to them. So they don't think that, oh, I have a big house or yeah, this is all mine. They're just like, oh yeah, this is like where I live, so like, whatever. And so, you know what I'm saying? And so I just want to say, you guys, you know, whenever you come across people like that and if you find yourself always coming across people that are successful like that, and even if they've aged on in years, you know, like elderly or whatever, you know, there's always usually a technique to how they got to where they are. And, you know, I can kind of see how people start investing at a young age. You know, they start saving at a young age. And I'm not saying wait till you're old to be well off, but there are some people that are way younger than me and that are very well off. And I know, I know a lot of people that are younger than me and they're very successful and, you know, I just kind of feel like sometimes when we when we come by these people's houses or if we just start having conversations with them or we keep bumping into the same people or having the same type of clients or customers, you know, that should also have us to think about, okay, is there something that I need to do? Now, this doesn't mean that all of you guys are going to be wealthy or rich because some of you guys aren't. But I think that that should start having you to think about your future if you're not already investing or if you're not already um, because even this is this is something that's convicting to me, uh, you know, or even if maybe you're in a place where, you know, you just want to start to do something different and trying to figure out, OK, what can I do? You know, because I'm not saying envy anybody or trying to be like them, but you know what I'm saying. And so I just kind of feel like when you be able like like when you're in a time in your life and you keep running into people like that, start thinking about 
your own self. Like start start thinking about, okay, well, do I want this type of lifestyle? This may not be meant for you, but you know, and I know some of you guys have probably inquired about that in your mind. Like, you know what? Like, how do they get a house like that? Like, what do they do? And maybe some of you guys have asked me, oh, oh, so what do you do? But the people that I've come across, like mostly, it's been mostly the men, like, like the husbands are the ones that have the money. And of course, the wives are the ones that are home with the kids or they're the ones taking care of the house or some people work from home. Like I dropped off some, um, I, I think it was an Instacart order. Yeah, it was an Instacart order. It was like months ago. And I think it was the customer's first order. And I don't think that he even knew that the groceries were coming because I think his wife ordered it, but he was on the phone. Um, I think he, it was like a conference call, but he had, but he had like like a Bluetooth or whatever. And so he uh, was talking, but he was like, I'm sorry, but I'm on a conference call. I'm working. I said, okay. He's like, I'm working. I was like, okay. You know, but you know, looking at their house, the house was nice. And it was here. I want to say it was here in the Maitland Winter Park area, but he worked from his house. You know what I'm saying? And so everybody that's well off doesn't always have a bit, you know, like, um, you know, they work in an office or whatever. Some people can actually work from their work from home. And so as I begin to think about some of these things, I'm like, wow, you know, a lot of these people that I've been running across, these wealthy folks, they work out of their house. Like they have their own business. And I know some people are like Amazon um, retailers, like, like they sell their stuff on Amazon. I mean, they're, I mean, I ran into some really interesting people. Some of them are attorneys. I ran into some people that are just consultants. Some of them are, are into the financial sector, like their stockbrokers and things like that. Um, and some people just have their own company, like like whatever it is that they do. And so I just found out, to me, I found that very interesting because it's starting to make me think. And so what really sparked me was, I think it was yesterday or the day before, um, there's a particular service I wanted to offer as part of one of my businesses. And so I kept thinking like, you know, how am I going to be able to do that? And I knew I could be able to develop an app for it, but I kept thinking, okay, well, I wouldn't mind doing it. And after I had got done with a Uber Eats order, I came home and I sat down on my couch. This was yesterday. Yeah, this was yesterday, actually. And I kept thinking about this particular type of company that I wanted to do, this business, this service. And when I sat down on the couch, I turned on the TV and I turned it on um, the Hallmark Channel. And so, like, I love the Hallmark Channel. And so, of course, you know, this is a season where they have all this Christmas, like, Christmas movies and stuff. And as I was watching this movie, the woman, the the like, the main character, she was uh, offering a service to a potential client that she was interested in because he was cute, I guess, to her or whatever. And so, I was thinking, it was crazy because I was just thinking of that particular service or that, or that particular business. And I kid you not, like... I was like, that's so weird. I was just thinking that. And so she became successful at it. But it was like, and that that's when I went back to the companies that I was interested in um, using to help develop my business and to help develop my app. And sure enough, I started working on the demos. I started, I downloaded a demo. I started fooling around with it, um, the software. But you know, guys know what I'm saying. And so that made me start to think, you know, that this is so interesting how this is all coming into play. And so then I started thinking, okay, well, I've come across a lot of wealthy people. I've been in this industry for a long time. I've always worked with people. You know, having a job, you work with people, but I've always been a person that's been interactive with people, you know, with customers face to face. So that began to make me think, okay, well, if I start my business if, or, or if I start to do this and this, I already know the areas to go to. Like, I already know what, uh, how to pitch. Like, like I already know where to go in order to make some money. And so, Ending this video, I apologize it's so long, but uh, ending this video, I just wanted to say, you know, think about some of the people you've come across. Think about, you know, um, some of the things that you've done to, uh, to um, you know, even train yourself in what you're doing. Like for instance, excuse me, like, like for instance, you know, um, some of you guys have had, had to have certifications in order to have a particular type of job, okay? And, but you always keep running into the same type of clients. And I'm sure like you guys were never, never steal anybody's clients or customers or, or whatever. But I'm just saying, for instance, like, you know, you know that you probably will be able to offer them a better service or, or a better offer or like whatever it is. And so um, I just think that when you keep meeting the same type of people, this should be like a way of you starting to work on 
developing your own business, developing your own clientele, and then start working on being a success for yourself. And even with this shoulder injury, it's taught me a lot because I used what I have learned from Instacart, even how they built the platform, um, and just kind of thought about some things and even coming across some of the clients. I mean, I met some great people and every once in a while, I mean, you know, I, I may talk to one or two of them because, you know, I, I had bonded with some of them, but it's just kind of like, I, I know how business is. And also want you guys to start thinking about how some of these companies have run, because as you guys know, with Uber, Lyft and Instacart and Shipped and Caviar, like TaskRabbit, like all these app-based gig companies, it's like, Think about, just pay attention to how they run their business, okay? And look at how they they, they have their setup. Um, and I'm not saying it's meant for you guys to do this type of business. I'm just saying in general. Because typically when you're dealing with customers, you'll be able to kind of get a feel on the type of customers or clients that you're able to approach or want to deal with. You know what I'm saying? And so almost every business is geared towards a certain type of customer or a certain type of client. Um, you know, some of them are age appropriate. Some might be male, some might be female, you know, you know, just like whatever. And so these are just so many things just to think about you guys. And so, you know, just, just say, Hey, you know, now it's time for me to start working on my own thing. And I don't want you guys just to start, try to start a business if you're not ready or if you're not people or if you're not a people person. Um, if you know that you don't get along with people too well, or if you have a short fuse with folk, then you might not want to deal with people. You might not want to start a business because having a business is about dealing with people. Um, and so I'm just going to close this video because it's a little bit too long. <laughs> Sorry about that. And I've been trying to keep it short, but you know, this, this is what this is what like, like what's on my mind. And so don't take it lightly, guys, when you are running into these awesome people, these well-to-do people in some of these neighborhoods. And also uh, when you keep coming across the same type of person, like if you keep running into lawyers, I'm not saying go out and be an attorney, but you know, let's start, start thinking about something or maybe a business geared towards attorneys or whatever, or geared towards people in a certain type of sector. Um, these are just some of the things to think about. Okay, guys. All right. I'm out. God bless you.